His life can be compared to the body. He built off the bones of others, created his own technique and styles to create flesh. Bip captured his heart and soul, and his acting school wrapped it all into skin, to secure the essentials but leave room for growing. Who is this, you ask? Marcel Marceau, the anatomy of a mime. In spite of a difficult childhood, Marcel Marceau overcame his environment to revive modern pantomime by building off the ideas of the founders of mime, appreciating the audience, and taking a non-analytical approach to his performance. Marceau was inspired at an early age by silent film stars such as Buster Keen, Harold Lloyd, Laurel and Hardy, and most of all, Charlie Chaplin. He once stated, When I was five years old, my mother took me to see Charlie Chaplin's moving pictures. I sat entranced. It was then I decided to become a mime. After seeing another Chaplin film, he imitated animals, people, and objects for neighborhood children while dressed in his father's large dress pants. Sadly, when World War II started, his dreams were put on hold. On September 3, 1939, France entered the war against Germany, and because the Marceau family was of Jewish origin, the Nazis targeted them. In order to protect themselves, the family changed their names from its original Mangel to Marceau, in honor of the French general Francois Severin Marceau de Scravieres. The war became personal when Marceau's father was sent to Auschwitz, eventually dying there in 1944. After their father was sent to Auschwitz, the Marceau brothers fled to Limoges, where in 1940 they joined the French resistance. Marceau changed the ages on identification cards of French youth, making them too young to join labor camps. Using only a red wax crayon and ink pens, he saved the lives of many. His other task was not so easy. Dressing as a Boy Scout leader, he would lead children whose parents were in the French underground or wanted by the Gestapo through the Alps to Switzerland in hope of leading the campers to safety. Looking back, Marceau wondered, would I have the courage to do it again? Although he continually risked his life for his countrymen by saving children, he was not finished hoping with the war effort. In 1944, Marceau attempted to enter drama school, but withdrew because his draft number was called to serve as a member of General Patton's army. With excellent English skills, Marceau became a liaison, as he fought alongside American soldiers in Germany from January to April in 1945. However, back in Dangerous Limoges, Elaine Marcel's picture appeared on the Gestapo wanted list. Once again, the two brothers fled to Paris under false names and identification papers. Marcel later said, The people who escaped the concentration camps could not talk about them. They didn't know what to say. I have Jewish origin, perhaps. That counted in the choice of silence, as a mime, subconsciously. It was very clear that his experience with the war affected him personally, and it affected his work. Um, some of the themes in his work express his ideas about humanity and his, his feelings about the war. He actually did a, a, a piece called Dick as a Soldier. Once in Paris, Marceau went to Maison d'Enfants de Sèvres, an orphanage where he taught dramatics. His character Savage was a hit among his child audience. Friday evenings consisted of a new play that Marceau invented himself, and on Saturdays he imitated Charlie Chaplin for the delight of the children. By a stroke of pure luck, he was seen performing by a theatrical historian and told to go at once to Charles Dolan to secure a spot in his mime school. Once he was accepted in the Doolin School of Dramatic Art, Marceau embarked on a learning adventure that would provide the backbone of his career. While studying under Etienne de Creux, a master of the art, Marceau became a favorite student. De Creux's perfect technique was passed down to him as he exploded with originality, facility, spirit, charm, and talent, the true signs of an artist. While in school, Marceau specialized in mime and worked diligently to master the de Creux grammar since it was to serve as a basis for all future work. Another area in which he specialized was humor and enticing the audience with it. De Creux didn't care about the public's opinion and thought humor cheapened the art. But Marceau had witnessed the comedy of American silent films and understood why the public thrived on it. In 1946, Marcel Marceau left De Creux to work with Jean-Louis Perrault and was first cast in the role of Harlequin in Baptiste. Although the reviews were excellent, the company Renaud Perrault only gave Marceau minor roles in the repertory in part because of the theatrical orientation and dominance of Beralt. Nevertheless, he grew immensely in experience and knew it was time to move on. Having discovered himself in 1947, he created his own company as a Theatre de Pouchet, or the Pocket Theatre. Work days were long, sometimes being 16 to 18 hours, but the work paid off. His hit started with silent mime dramas. 
One performance, Praxitel and the Golden Fish, firmly established his career. In 1956, Marceau started his solo performances. As mentioned before, the earlier masters of mime disapproved of the public, while Marceau entranced them by encouraging active participation by the public, consequently reviving mime as a popular art. Marceau's performances were like playing a silent guessing game in that the objective was to identify action and the character being played. The mime displayed movement in order to increase the likelihood of successful recognition by the public. One of the great things about Marceau's performances was that because there were no words, any person could understand his messages. Love was love, and sadness was sadness. The feelings were the same. Pantomime was therefore a universal art and a means of communication between all the people in the world who craved love and beauty, he once said. Taking a non-analytical approach was to become the flesh of Marceau's performances. In comparison with painters, his style was similar to that of an impressionist painter, because the lines and shapes were not defined, but the sense of the total form was clear. It is not what was seen, but how one saw it. He once stated, Does not the most moving of moments leave us all without words? De Croo and Barat had very philosophical bases to their performances. They were both a theoretician and a performer. However, Marcel Marceau was not comfortable with being just a theoretic, since he was primarily a performer. White face, red lips, black hat, red flower. Meet Bip, Marcel Marceau's trademark. Bip is to Marcel Marceau as the heart is to the human body. He thrives on it. It completes him. Why did he choose a clown, you might wonder? As he says, in the circus, clowns have been a reflection of slapstick mime. In a clown, we see what we do that makes us laugh or cry. I wanted to be an abstract and concrete figure, a symbol of humanity. Marcel's inspiration for Bib comes from Pip, a character in the novel Great Expectations. Dressed in a striped pullover, he became Marceau's alter ego. But there is more to his hat than meets the eye. The battered red carnation represents that life is fragile but sweet in spite of circumstances. Marceau's good friend Ben Martin once said, one night in my home, I saw this look. Without makeup, without costume, he seemed to be leaning against the mantelpiece, though he was more than five feet away from the fireplace. He was being Bip without even knowing it. It's just the way he is. Bip will be perhaps remembered as Marcel Marceau himself. And although there are many other areas to Marcel's performance, Bip shines like a beacon to other mimes as a symbol of the art. Marcel Marceau's school is the skin to his life. It contained the essentials but left room for growing. Although the school had some struggles, it emerged in 1978 with the financial help of the city Paris as a haven for future mimes. École Internationale du Mime Drame de Paris, Marcel Marceau, taught many pupils, but not just anyone could make it into the Master of Mime School. In order to be considered for his school, a person must have been at least 18 years of age and no older than 26. Classes include fencing, acrobatics, acting, corporal mime, and Marceau's own technique classes. In 2005, when Marceau retired from the stage, he also retired from teaching and closed his school officially. Sadly, on September 22, 2007, in the town of Southwest Gores, France, the world was struck with tragedy by the death of Marceau Marceau. In the end, though a full life had been lived and a legacy passed on, Universally considered the world's greatest contemporary mime artist, Marcel Marceau was a true legend. He single-handedly resurrected the art of mime, reinterpreting it for jaded post-war audiences and elevating it to a universal language. Marcel Marceau was an inspiration to many, some silent and some not. By leading young Jewish children to safety during World War II, Marceau also preserved the lives and voices of many who otherwise would have been silenced forever. Michael Jackson's Moonwalk is inspired from Marceau's Walking Against Wind Routine. Broadcaster Jacques Chancel said, He spoke in silence, and what is amazing is that while so many people speak and manage to say nothing, for him it was the silence that brought a whole melody of language. Marceau survived a difficult childhood, built off the bones of others, involved the audience, and took a non-analytical approach to pantomime to resurrect it and bring it into the modern world. Although his physical heart has passed on, his spirit and legacy will live on in the hearts of many for years to come.